You welcome back. Nigeria expects by April to license one of the vaccines under development globally for COVID-19. Director General of the National Agency for Food, Drug Administration and Control, Mojisola Adeyege, who disclosed this, said Nigeria expects to benefit from the World Health Organization back. COVAX initiative. The COVAX partnership is also operating on a similar timeline for licensing for its first coronavirus vaccine. For more on what to expect from the vaccine, we're joined by Dr. Sonny Olukunle Phillips. Dr. Phillips is a public health consultant involved in health system strengthening and human resource for health. Thank you very much for joining us on the news, Dr. Phillips. Pleasure being here thank you for having me now where does nigeria stand as we speak in terms of collaborating with local drug uh, makers to produce uh, an indigenous vaccine okay so uh, to be very candid uh, it's a long shot if we're talking about indigenous vaccine i think the government and even african governments and all the developing countries uh, have kind of uh, come to the conclusion that for now, for the current need, for the urgent need to get the vaccine out, uh, working on it alone might not be the ideal thing now. So uh, there's a global, uh, a global platform to make sure that developing countries, Nigeria inclusive, uh, can have access to COVID vaccines, not uh, essentially the ones produced indigenously, which might take a whole lot of time to get up and get uh, to the front line. So at the moment, I think uh, the, the, the understanding is that the country, along with several other developing countries, will leverage on the global efforts to make vaccines available along the ones that are already uh, being used in the Western world. Now, Dr. Phillips, there's a lot of concern about uh, talking about vaccines being used in the uh, Western world since you've said uh, we have long reach from producing uh, an indigenous vaccine. Uh, a lot of countries have signed up to Gavi or the COVAX initiative, but there's a lot of concerns about uh, Africa's preparedness, uh, looking at the infrastructure deficit on ground because uh, it, it takes a sophisticated um, chain to have them delivered to the end users you have to have a temperature control and water view what are we doing uh, to mitigate some of these uh, challenges that might arise as uh, a result of our infrastructure deficits uh, poor infrastructure deficits in africa okay thank you so very much i think uh we, we to be very candid we need to give a whole lot of kudos to the uh, acquired and uh, results they already have with experience with ebola vaccine with other uh diseases that require vaccination polio was uh, recently uh, confirmed to be completely off the country it, it's uh, a disease that is intervened via vaccine so we already have an idea or mm. uh, we have very robust experience on what to do pay the logistics of vaccine we have that already as part of our technical know-how uh with particular respect to covid vaccine we know the challenge will be around cold chain which the global platform is willing to assist uh, most countries, uh, developing countries, including Nigeria with. But when it comes to the actual logistics of moving a vaccine from production to uh, to vaccination point, uh, most developing countries actually have a very good and robust experience because they've grappled with several other diseases requiring vaccination, and the experience is still very so, so the, very relevant. The experience, like you said, will come in handy. 
Now, finally, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dr. Phillips, so uh, before I let you go, there's a, the, the World Health Organization Director General, Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, did say that we are not only fighting a pandemic, we're also fighting an infodemic. There's been a lot of uh, conspiracy theorists out there. There's been a lot of fake news on whether people should take the vaccine or not. And these things do have public health implications. So my question to you is, how do we convince people that, you know, this vaccine is safe uh, for use? And uh, how do we get all that uh, fake news out of the system? How do we convince them that, look, it's for our own good, it's good for the public good when the vaccine has been approved uh, to take it? Yeah. Thank you very much. Two things, information management and public, continuous public engagement. There is hardly any medical technology vaccine inclusive that is completely risk free. None, including the tablets we are taking, including all the medications that we are taking that is risk free. As many of these vaccines have been rolled out, they have been monitored for adverse reactions. A whole lot of light is on the administration to monitor for adverse reaction. And at the moment of such incidents, you can be guaranteed that they will be pulled off the shelf. They will be removed from the list because the whole world is out to really monitor the impact of these vaccines. So we have no reason to, uh, to exercise any hesitation or fear. There are mechanisms to monitor vaccination and reduce the risk on those that have been vaccinated. There is no medical technology that doesn't that is completely risk-free. The challenge we are facing is the conspiracy theorists out there that are willing to ride on all these fallacious, non-scientific basis to make outrageous, outlandish conclusions that people may become uh, fearful of. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sonny Phillips. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thanks for joining us on New Central. Pleasure of mine. Thank you so very much for having me.